guys. Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Pro Home Studio Setups. And if you're new here, my name is Edward Smith and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a deep dive into the home studio setup of very popular and successful EDM producer, Kygo. Kygo is a Norwegian EDM and pop producer, famously known for his tropical remixes of Ed Sheeran's Icy Fire and original platinum hits Firestone, Iren Me and Sunrise. Kygo is the first artist on Spotify to reach 1 billion streams and has recently surpassed the 2 billion stream mark. From making music in his bedroom to performing at the Olympics, let's have a look at the recording equipment that made it all happen. A laptop or desktop is the centerpiece of a home studio, and in Kaigo's case, he doesn't hold back. As a music producer, the key components one looks at is RAM, storage, and CPU. Kaigo uses an Apple Mac desktop computer as his main driver, processing with 16GB of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and an i7 processor. This gives him the ability to navigate between projects and plugins without any type of lag or latency. On the go, he uses an Apple MacBook Pro with the same specs. This allows him to create music anywhere and at any time. For a traveling producer, having a good music production laptop is essential. As a Mac producer, the door Kygo uses is Apple's Logic Pro X. This is a great door for Mac users looking to upgrade from producer apps like GarageBand and is actually not much more complicated to use. Investing in a good door is essential to the success of a producer, because you'll be spending most of your time creating music. And improving your workflow is even more important. The only way to do both these things efficiently is to learn everything there is to know about your door. For $200, Logic Pro X is a great door option. Studio monitors are essential to a home studio setup, and in Kygo's case, he uses some of the cheapest and most expensive monitors out there, starting off with the Yamaha HS5s. The famous story about the old Yamaha NS10 studio monitors was that they were chosen not because they sounded great, but because they didn't. The theory being that if you could mix a track to sound good on them, you could be confident it would sound good anywhere. Of course, times have changed and even modern entry-level monitors will do a job, but the appeal of owning a piece of genuine studio history is strong. The Yamaha HS5 series are reference speakers which are built solely with mixing and monitoring in mind. There's no Bluetooth or graphic EQ, and room correction is basic at best. For sheer accuracy, however, they are hard to beat at this price range. Get your mix right on these, and it will sound fantastic anywhere. For only $200 per monitor, these are a must in any home studio setup. Kygo's second set of studio monitors are not as cheap as the first, and to be honest, at $2,500 per monitor, these Genelec 8350A studio monitors are too expensive for a basic home studio setup. Yes, these monitors are probably too expensive for most of us, but you do get what you pay for. The Genelec A3508 by Amplify Studio monitors are built for demanding professional applications, providing you with a compact footprint, a sophisticated enclosure design, and outstanding acoustic performance. The A3508 monitors are compatible with Genelec Smart Active Monitor SAM technology. SAM technology allows these studio monitors to optimize themselves and automatically align their level, timing and equalization of room response anomalies, ensuring that you hear the original nuances of your source without leaving anything out or adding anything to your signal. On top of that, these monitors deliver impressively deep bass, built-in decoupling, ISS power management and more. Whether you work in a recording studio, post-production house, digital edit suite, radio or television, you can't go wrong with a set of Genelec A3508 by Amplified Studio Monitors. One would think that the music equipment of a pro producer like Kygo is the best of the best. But funny enough, that is not the case. Yes, he owns many synthesizers and a thousand-dollar Rolly Seaboard MIDI, but his most used MIDI keyboard is a $200 M Audio Keyrig 49. The latest version of this model costs only $110. Now that says a lot. 
The Keystation 49 MK3 is a simple, powerful MIDI controller designed for sequencing music and playing virtual instruments on your Mac or PC. This MIDI features 49 natural feeling full size velocity sensitive keys and comprehensive controls that expand the range of playable notes, expressive capabilities and enhance your recording workflow. If this $200 MIDI keyboard can do the job for Kygo, it will probably do the job for you. Now we move on to a more fun and unique MIDI keyboard, and that is Kygo's $1000 Roly Seaboard Rise 49 MIDI. The Seaboard Rise is a multi-award winning next generation MIDI controller that gives you unlimited control of sound. A soft, continuous, touch responsive surface replaces the keys of a traditional keyboard. With expression at your fingertips, a new way of making music is on the rise. For a home studio, this isn't a necessary piece of gear, but it's great if you feel like being super creative. One of the most important pieces of gear in a home studio is your audio interface. And in Kygo's case, I'm not that impressed. You would expect him to use a $2,000 Apollo audio interface, but instead he uses a $200 M-Audio Avid interface. Featuring a simple plug in and play USB connection, Fast Track MK2 by M Audio is an easy way to record guitar, vocals, and more with your PC or Mac. Simply plug in your instruments and you're ready to rock. Fast Track even offers phantom power, so you can use professional quality studio condenser microphones. This audio interface is compatible with the most popular music recording applications as well, from GarageBand to Studio Standard Pro Tools, and it includes Pro Tools Empowered Essential an easy to use recording and effects software so that you can start making music immediately. Now, the world of Pro Tools is more accessible than ever. This just shows that you don't need the most expensive gear to make it really big. So that's the end of this first episode of Pro Home Studios. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful going through the equipment of these successful pro producers, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any producers that you think I should talk about next. But other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up and if you loved it, subscribe down below and I will see you for another one of these next time.